In this presentation, I'll be describing the evolution of adult developmental models and metrics, starting with Piaget and ending with the work of myself and my colleagues here at Lectica. I'll include the work of 10 researchers. All have worked within the cognitive developmental tradition pioneered by Piaget, and all have developed models and metrics that are based on strong longitudinal evidence. The models include those of Piaget, Perry, Kohlberg, Selman, Keegan, Kitchener and King, Fisher, Commons, Armin, and yours truly, Theo Dawson. You may notice that the ego development models based on Levenger's work aren't included. We haven't included these models because they haven't been shown to measure the same cognitive developmental dimension we're targeting here. And before we go further, it might be a good idea to clarify what is meant by cognitive developmental model. Put simply, the term means a model of the development of understanding of the external social and physical world, our inner experience, ourselves and others, and our relationships. The numerous domains studied by cognitive developmental researchers include, but aren't limited to, ego development, or the development of self-understanding, moral, ethical, and spiritual development, the development of logic and judgment, leadership decision-making, and science concepts like the physics of energy. Let's begin by positioning the researchers associated with our 10 models in a historical context. I've used a timeline here because each successive model metric combination builds upon what was learned from the development of and research with the earlier developmental models and metrics. For example, Kohlberg deliberately built his moral judgment stages to parallel Piaget's stages of logic. He saw Piagetian stages as domain-independent core structures and moral judgment stages as special instances of these stages in the moral domain. When Kohlberg's research subjects who were 11 when his research began entered adulthood, Kohlberg discovered a new developmental level for adulthood, level 5. Next, Selman and Kohlberg, who were colleagues, strongly influenced one another. In fact, Selman's stages of social perspective taking are represented in Kohlberg's moral judgment level definitions and scoring criteria. Kohlberg and Selman were followed by Keegan, who aligned his ego development stages with Kohlberg's moral judgment stages. Even the descriptions of Keegan's stages share many similarities with Kohlberg's descriptions. Later, Fisher and Kitchener and King worked together to compare their systems and were able to agree on the alignment of the two systems that's shown in this table. Note that Fisher's model is not a model of development in a specific domain. It is a model of hierarchical complexity in general being used in this instance to examine levels of reflective judgment. I'll bring up this difference between developmental models again later in this presentation. All of the previous comparisons were qualitative, based on the comparison of scoring criteria used in different systems. At the turn of the century, I began to conduct the first quantitative comparisons. These took the form of sophisticated examinations of the relation between the dimension measured by my own assessment system, the lectical assessment system, and the dimensions measured by Perry, Kohlberg, Fisher, Commons, and Armin. I found that the dimension underlying all of these scoring systems was the same one, hierarchical complexity, and that the lectical assessment system was a more precise and reliable tool for measuring this dimension. All of this work is published in respected journals. And another scholar, Aidan Thornton, has recently undertaken a similar comparison of Keegan's scoring system and the lectical assessment system using similar methods. 
These comparisons lead to the conclusion that the dimension of capability that underlies all of these models and metrics is hierarchical complexity, and that the lectical assessment system is almost certainly the most reliable and precise measure of this dimension. Now let's return to the timeline to explore the differences and similarities between these systems in more detail. Several of the metrics, including those developed by Selman, Keegan, Kitchener and King, and Arman, are related to one another through Kohlberg's work. They are either based upon Kohlberg's moral judgment stages or built with the longitudinal methods used by Kohlberg. These metrics and models are also domain-specific and include Kohlberg's moral judgment, Selman's measure of social perspective-taking, Keegan's measure of ego development, Kitchener and King's measure of reflective judgment, and Arman's measure of conceptions of the good life. The other metrics, developed by Fisher, Commons, and Dawson, are neo-Piagetian in the sense that they build directly upon and revise Piaget's developmental model. These models are all domain independent. This means, among other things, that they can all be used to develop any number of assessments. And finally, two of the metrics are not only domain independent, they are also associated with domain general scoring systems. These scoring systems can be used to score any phenomenon that exhibits hierarchical complexity, which, as shown earlier, is the dimension that underlies all of the models and metrics represented on this timeline. Aside from being either domain-specific or domain-general, there are several other differences between these models and their metrics. For example, the models are associated with different numbers of adult developmental levels or phases, as you can see here, Keegan and Dawson propose more than twice as many levels or phases than proposed in other models. They are also associated with different numbers of measurable or statistically distinct levels or phases. Dawson's metric, which has also been submitted to the most rigorous validity and reliability studies of all of the metrics represented on this timeline, detects 10 statistically distinct phases in adulthood. This ability to make finer distinctions between developmental levels has several advantages, including making it possible to customize learning experiences to meet the specific needs of individuals. The next difference between these models is the number of different assessments representing different competencies they are associated with. As noted earlier, the domain general models allow for multiple assessments of diverse competencies in a variety of knowledge areas. The last difference we'll explore on the timeline is whether or not the assessments associated with these models can be scored electronically. Only Dawson and the Lectica team have achieved this goal. Electronic scoring makes it possible to score verbal performances instantaneously and affordably, which means true cognitive developmental assessments can now be delivered at scale. Thank you for your interest in the origins of lectical assessments. If you'd like to learn more, there are many resources on our website, lecticalive.org, and on our YouTube channel. And if you're interested in learning more about hierarchical complexity, you can find out more at https lecticalive.org about hierarchical complexity and on Dr. Dawson's blog, theodawson.net.